now finally, however many years into COVID, I, uh, I have got, there are a couple of things about COVID that really interest me and they've interested me from the beginning. And uh, the, the first one is, as I've said before, I was, uh, I started following COVID about a week or two after the shutdown of Wuhan when they had to close a Hyundai factory in Korea because of Wuhan closing, you know, a thousand miles away. And I'm always very interested in the interconnectedness and fragility of the global economic system. And so it fascinated me that a city shuts down a thousand, fifteen hundred, however many miles away, and then a factory has to shut down pretty quickly. And I've done videos about this, and I, I just think it's it's extraordinary for a bunch of levels. One is the fact that we have a global economic system that is this interdependent because this sort of interdependence means fragility. Because um, if you can have supply lines interdicted by, it doesn't matter, by a disease, by a conspiracy. I mean, it doesn't actually doesn't matter where you are on any political spectrum about this. If, if they can be shut down because of a tsunami because of a of a um, earthquake because of an illness because of a war um, it just strikes me as I, i'm i'm actually even though i don't have a lot of respect for for human intelligence and i don't have a lot of respect for our collective intelligence especially um, it has struck me as extraordinary that that this whole uh, experience has not dramatically pushed for relocalization of food supplies much. You know, the, I would think that that this would be a huge wake up call for people to relocalize food supplies, but haven't seen that happen at all. I mean, it's one thing if you can't get your latest electronic gadget because of uh, because of international supply chains, but it's another thing to not be able to get food. And it's extraordinary to me that, you know, the last several years, they've started raising chickens, of course, in horrible conditions in Arkansas, and then sending them to China to be processed and then sending them back to the United States to be eaten. That's just, this is going the completely wrong direction. And this is, this is what's happening. So it's, it's one thing that, that's, that, that, but about the whole COVID experience that, that I've been very fascinated by is, uh, is the, just how much it has revealed how incredibly both interdependent and fragile the global economic system is. And I think people who know my work can guess what one of the main reasons I am so excited about ways that reveal the uh, fragility of the global economic system. And another, Part of this that, that has always struck me is that, you know, people, when they clear cut, when they put in a dam, when they, de de when they vacuum the oceans, they always pretend to be surprised when this ramifies, when this causes extinctions. Oh, we can clear cut this area and there'll be no significant impact. But it reveals that they're lying because they understand interconnectedness extremely well when they understand the interconnectedness of the global economic system. When they understand how an earthquake or a fire in Japan can lead to an increase in timber prices in the Pacific Northwest because they're rebuilding using wood from here. They understand this interconnectedness. But when it comes to wild nature suddenly they get really stupid and oh wait so a creature the, the salmon are going extinct because we put in dams who would have thought which really makes clear that it's not actually stupidity but the fact that they absolutely don't care and no it's not even worse than they don't care they they simply want what they want and they will ignore everything to get what they want anyway so that's one thing i've been thinking about COVID for the past few years and the other thing that I've been thinking about COVID for the past few years that, that um, really 
I find most striking is that given the way we live, I am consistently and on a daily basis stunned that this doesn't happen more often. By this, I mean pandemics. Um, the real, the, I am gobsmacked that we don't get highly deadly pandemics spinning across the planet on an almost daily basis because we have, we collectively have created circumstances that could best be described as factory farms for humans where that's what a city is. You have humans packed in tight and then with constant contact with each other. And then you have global trans instant, almost instantaneous transportation. So you have somebody gets sick in Mumbai and they pass that to somebody else who passes to somebody else who gets on a plane and it's in Paris the next day. The day after that, it's in New York City. The day after that, it's in Rio de Janeiro. And back in my 20s or 30s, I, I wrote one article for the New York Times Magazine. And the article was about um, honeybees and diseases. It was a very short piece. And it basically was about how when you pull a half million, three quarters of a million of hives into um, one county in California, um, and you bring them there for the almonds or almonds, as they say locally, and to pollinate. And then once they're done with that, you move them around, including during the summer, you might move them to South Dakota. So you pack a bunch of them in tight, that's going to move disease from hive to hive to hive. And then you move them up to, up to South Dakota. Meanwhile, people from Florida are moving their bees up to, up to South Carolina, or, I'm sorry, you move them to South Dakota. You move bees from Florida up to South Dakota, those bees intermingle. And then that next year, you move those bees back down to Florida. You have taken the disease all the way across the country in less than a year. And it's, and what I said in that article was that it was completely inevitable that this was going to happen. There's absolutely no way you can avoid this happening repetitively. And it's the same with, with, with this, when you have people packed in tight and it's transportation. And I understand that modern sanitation is holding these at bay. I understand that antibiotics hold some at bay, but um, it, is, it is only a matter of time until we get hammered by pandemic after pandemic, uh, given the framing conditions, given the conditions Again, if you were to design a system um, for the transmissibility of highly infectious diseases, you could not design a better system for that transmissibility than the one we've got. 